Good evening. Uh, welcome to a tremendously exciting tasting of Rawmar Whiskies and Arden American Distillery. As a whisky fan, it is a great pleasure to be here hosting the first public tasting of Arden American Single Malt. I know so many of you are excited as well. So, um, first of all, uh, I should say I'm at Arden American Distillery. Some of you may have been here. Um, it's up on the west coast of Scotland. Uh, precisely, geographically, it's a long way from absolutely everywhere. Um, uh, and uh, But it's a beautiful place and we've had a lovely day with the Arden Merkin team. Um, so first of all, let's look at the dramming order so you guys can get yourself set. So we're going to start with the Arden Merkin single malt. So this is a miniature of the bottled product that will be hitting the shelves next week uh, in many stores. Um, then we're going to have uh, three single casks, the Paul Longlois cask finish, the bourbon cask from 2015, and the Oloroso cask also from 2015. You'll notice some pretty punchy strengths there. So hopefully you've got a little jug of water. Most of them will probably take a bit of water, depending on how you take your whiskey, but certainly I'd say a bit of water is advisable. And yeah, just I would also recommend lining those little bottles up because they look quite similar and you could get confused as the dram, dramming goes on in the evening. So yes, the Arden Merkin single malt, the Paul Noir cast finish, then the Bourbon cast 2015 and the Oloroso cast 2015. Uh, before we get cracking and bring in Alex Bruce, Managing Director of Arthur Merkin Distillery and Adelphi, I just thought I'd give it a little bit of context, a little bit of um, summary of the process at Arthur Merkin, which is a single malt whiskey uh, distillery. So I'm going to show you a little video, but I'll just briefly talk through uh, the basics of what you're going to see. So obviously it's a single malt whiskey distillery. So they are using barley. And uh, that barley, 50% or over, over half actually, comes from the family Bruce Farm down in Fife, Brew Hall. Then they use um, peated uh, barley, so smoked barley for six months of the year and then unpeated for the remaining six of the year. Um, if you know your PPM, the peated stock is, uh, sorry, the peated barley is peated to 30 phenol parts per million. So pretty smoky, not quite as smoky as something like Ardbeg or Lefroy. Um, uh, they use uh, modern varietals of barley most of the time, but then uh, for one month of the year, they use Golden Promise. You'll see mashing, which is effectively, if you're relatively new to whiskey, this is where the ground up barley uh, has uh, hot water put onto it to put it into solution. So uh, the starches can be turned into sugars, which are accessed at the next point, which is fermentation. So that uh, sweet malty liquid called wort is pumped into the wash bags. They add a yeast, the yeast eats the sugar, uh, produces alcohol and CO2. Um, of the yeast they use. Um, so some of this information may, may be more interesting if you're, if you're more familiar uh, to how distilleries work, but they use uh, either a French um, distiller's yeast called Fermentes, and uh, that's for the unpeated, and then they use Anchor distiller's yeast for the peated. The fermentation is quite long, uh, an average of 72 hours. Then that, uh, that wash or uh, beer, as we can think of it, is pumped into two stills. Um, we have a wash still of 10,000 litres and a spirit still of 6,000 litres. It's a double distillation. It's a double distilled single malt. Um, they run the heads for about 20 minutes. Um, then there's a, a, a heart of about three hours. Um, so low steam, quite a long Heart, and then the, the faint sort of runoff. Um, and then you'll see some maturation shots of the warehouse as well, um, where they use um, slightly more bourbon casts and sherry casts, about 65% uh, bourbon, 35% sherry, almost entirely uh, traditional dunnage warehouses, so earthen floor, three stacked high. I think there's one second floor warehouse that hasn't got an earthen floor, but still with that three stack high um, and the whiskey is tasting great we'll get on to that first whiskey very soon so just to recap here's some production shots um, so this is barley coming in um, as I say a lot of it from their own farm in Fife 
Um, I did mention actually the wood chip boiler that I think you see here. So there's a big focus on sustainability there of the wood chips coming in. Uh, Arden Merkin has a lot of timber all around. Um, so uh, a lot of that is used to uh, fire the, the boilers for the energy um, for the distillery. That's the tun room. This will be the inside of the mash tun. Uh, yes, uh, I don't think we've got a shot of the wash bag, but that's, yeah, that's them mashing the inside of the stills. Uh, the two beautiful copper pot stills, the spirit safe where the cut is made, the head to hearts and faints. Um, and uh, yeah, that's again inside of the spirit safe. Uh, here we are in the warehouse where I had a lovely little wander around today. This is my third time visiting the distillery. It's been fantastic to see the warehouses fill up and then another warehouse be built. So drawing samples as they would have done over, well, lockdown a lot of it in the start of the year as they tried to put together their first single malt. Um, yeah, there we go. So I hope that's useful, a little overview of production. But it is time to bring in Mr. Alex Bruce. Hi, Alex. Hi, Arthur. I just need to explain that, okay, so the first dram we've got is going to be the single malt. Um, the, as I say, the whiskey that will be on the shelves from next week, coming soon. I know you guys have been working very hard to do that. So this split actually reflects uh, the, the stock in the warehouse. Uh, so that's coming soon. So we'll let you guys get used to that. Um, uh, try the whiskey and then we'll, we'll come back and kind of assess it at the end and, uh, and talk about how it was put together. But let's, uh, let's not bias you for your first taste of this exciting single malt and, and let you get used to it. Uh, and me and Alex have a little chat in the meantime. So, Alex, um, I think it's fair to say that if you're involved in single malt whiskey production, an element of long term thinking is necessary. But I think with Arden Merkin, that's even more the case. I'm thinking of sustainability and, and, and blockchain. Uh, sustainability, we're all used to that concept, but blockchain is relatively new as a concept in the industry and something you're pioneering. Yeah, it's um, it's still um, it's very difficult to describe blockchain in uh, easy words. Um, most people associate it or have associated it with cryptocurrencies in the past, where you can almost bypass banks because of its incorruptible nature. You don't need that adjudicator, if you like, the judge of having a bank when you're dealing in financial transactions. But in terms of how we're using it with Scotch whiskey. Um, we are basically, if you look at it as a sort of old fashioned diary or ledger with a padlock on it and every event that takes place in your life or your day or whatever you're doing, you, you write it in and then you, you lock it in basically, it's, it's there written in your diary. Um, so what we are doing is we've built this system using a blockchain ledger or diary and everything we do from the supply chain to the production chain to the maturation is logged in that diary. Um, so if someone's um, uh, doing a mash, for example, all that stuff that they would normally feed into the HMRC report uh, is going into this ledger. So it's completely transparent, it's incorruptible, it's locked in there, and we have an adjudicator, we have a judge in Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, HMRC, because when you're making alcohol, you have to show that what you bring in in terms of your malted barley is creating the right amount of spirit, which is then maturing and the angels aren't drinking too much uh, during maturation. So there, there, are, there are weight and weight measures all the way along, if you like. So that is our judge to make sure that we're not falsifying our records. So I can see the benefits for yourselves as distillers and, and, and first time distillers, um, obviously you're a, a renowned independent bottler, but first time distillers, you're learning about this process as you're going along. So information is a great way to learn. But this transparency also is uh, available to the consumer, isn't it? I, I think there's a, I've got a bottle behind me. Actually. So we've got the QR code on there, haven't we? Uh, yeah. and how do you see the consumers benefiting from this? Well, it's very much, it's a question of um, that extra step. So you, obviously if you're buying a bottle, um, which we hope you will, <laughs> uh, you're, you're, you're obviously, you're opening it. Again, we hope you'll open it and, and enjoy it. But um, being able just to literally pull up your phone, whether it be your iPhone or whatever, scan that QR code, 
and you can have as much or as little information as you want about the process. So right from the field we harvested the barley in, all the way through uh, to the maturation, uh, every step of the way, the bottling even as well. Um, and uh, yeah, it's all there. You know, you can you can geek out as much as you like with with it, or you can just look at the the headline stuff. Um, but we are it is an open window into what we are doing. There's nothing closed at all. I really like the idea of this traceability element, but without kind of forcing the concept of what part of that process is defining the kind of flavor. I, I don't make specific reference to other distillers, but certain other ones are going with traceability, but already making big claims that one element is making all the difference, but you're just getting on, on with it, doing, uh, making whiskey as well as you can, and then letting consumers, customers, drinkers kind of learn about it. And we all know whiskey drinkers love to learn. It, it's, it's, a, it's a learning hobby that justifies the habit. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I speak for myself there. So, uh, yeah, I think that's great. And, you know, and, uh, it, it, it works in, in the local environment. You know, we, so many questions over the years about why are you building a distillery? What's going to taste like all this kind of stuff. But one of the most uh, asked questions is why did you build a distillery in Arden American? You know, mm. it's a single track road for an hour and a half, and it's, it's um, yeah, it's, it's remote. But the whole point, and you, you touched on that brilliantly just there, is that we are making the best possible spirit that we can, and we are letting the environment do the rest. So where we are is giving us, hopefully, our unique character. Um, yeah, and it's like whiskey, whiskey fans, well, retailer as well, I suppose, professional, but still a whiskey fan. And there's cer still certain mysteries that we argue about that this will contribute. Like, I, I find there's a salinity to Arden American. Where is that coming from? You probably, you probably don't want to answer that now. You know, years of the blockchain, years of, you know, maybe if there's tweaks in the process, maybe we'll find the answer of where that comes from. I think that would be a shame in a way. There has, there has to remain some kind of black art around it. Um, <sighs> Well, but yeah, no, I couldn't give you a definitive answer. I'd be lying if I if I came up with a story about well, it. I'm not, it, so, I'm, I'm not <laughs> saying that people are going to agree on the internet about <laughs> a, a, an actual answer, but yes. it's certainly um, you, you, you can, as a fan, you can inform your opinion, which at the moment exactly. is a lot of guesswork, a lot of guesswork. So um, it's a great contribution. And sustainability, I showed the wood chip boiler you know you may drive up here's a lot of timber that um you're able to use and um and i i just wonder are you already seeing the benefits of sustainability um in actual price i mean you, you produced a very affordable single malt are you already seeing those cost benefits yeah i mean we were um we were very uh, pragmatic about our sustainability um we obviously want to be sustainable um but look, when you're this remote, the last thing you want to be doing commercially is is um, ordering oil in a tanker to come down a single track road, you know, mm. from three hours away. It just doesn't make commercial sense. So you look to your local resources, and we are, as you say, we're we're very fortunate to have an abundance of uh, perfect timber um, forestry around us, and we're actually it's it's a kind of double, it's a win win because before the distillery. That timber, in order to, to be worth anything as a commodity, because you've got to harvest it, you've got to replant and all the rest of it, it had to be hauled out to Fort William, which is two hours in a truck. So that's right. carbon footprint, that's heavy haulage on a single track road. It's now, all that's happening is being chipped two miles away and delivered to us in a tractor and trailer. Um, and, and we've got the full usage. So it's it, it makes sense, yeah. And I think if you're going to win favour with locals. They don't really want tankers of oil going up and down or tankers of uh, on, on what is very much a single track road. Absolutely. Um, no. No. Um, so. the, the, the only regular lorries we have are uh, malt deliveries and mm. just starting now, um, taking the, the whiskey out in bulk uh, to bottle down in Fife. But that's, you know, even between the two of them, it's, it's not very much. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. And actually, I, I, I mentioned people like Arthur Merkin. I, I'm already feeling there's a big story 
about people in what is a, a very remote part of Scotland. And I would say how you've contributed to what is a, a very slim job market as uh, reasons for people to stay um, uh, in the area, especially young people. I imagine you're contributing a great deal there. Yeah, look, um, people is so important. And I'll be the first person to put my hand up and say, when we were designing the distillery, it wasn't at the forefront of our plan, if you like. But it is so, so important in a remote community that, that you're not just part of the community, but you are um, very much uh, asking them to be part of it, if you like. So we are now, you know, we're now, what, six and a bit years in, we have a completely local team. Uh, we had to bring in some expertise to start with. Um, and, and, you know, a huge thanks to the guys who helped us when we started. Um, but I mean, Gordon, who's just appeared here, you he, happen to he, have one of those people there. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, this is Gordon. He's our, he's our production manager. Uh, been here since since uh, uh, since we started, and um, yeah, I mean, I mean, you you were, you told me a story once, Gordon, that you were driving past um, and I saw a sign go up. Yeah, you? yeah, I was driving a local bus for many years. Kilhorn bus to Fairlawn every day. I'd heard there was a distillery going up, but. I don't think I believed it till I seen the signs going up at the bottom of the field and the diggers rolling in. And then, uh, yeah, uh, a few years later, here we are on the brink. <laughs> it's, uh, it's good to taste it. I hope everybody enjoys it. No, it. It is such an amazing thing. I mean, we had the whole team was here yesterday and just everyone, you can see it. We all have, have reached that stage now where it's, it's reality. And there's something in bottle that's so exciting. Um, and to to know that this, this this whiskey, which we're just tasting at the moment, is going to be hopefully as far as New Zealand by Christmas um, from our American is just great. Um, yeah. And it, yeah, it's Gordon and his team who've, who've done it. So it's fantastic. Thank you, Gordon. And you're not missing the kids on the bus too much? Uh, well, there were some lovely people on the bus, I must say. <laughs> and uh, I was there for nearly 17 years. Right. Uh, yeah, don't miss it so much now. But they'll be working <laughs> here one day anyway. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> good. Uh, wow. good. Thanks for the thanks for the delicious whiskey, Gordon. So I, I think yeah. we, we we've probably given people long enough to have a little assessment of the whiskey, and um, and let's let's bring in Connell, um, and we can talk about this process. So, I mean, it's as a retailer, it's hi, Connell. How are we doing? Very well, very well, thanks. Um, so as a retailer, as a whiskey fan, it is just so exciting when a new distillery uh, hits the market and when it's finally ready, it feels like longer than six years. Um, and you've got 10,000 casks in the warehouse uh, and you've got to define almost a house style because that can be shaped by the cask you choose. And you've also got to create a product like that. How did you guys go about that? <laughs> Two big questions. Let's start with the liquid. Yeah, so we we literally just locked ourselves in a warehouse for about a week, 10 days, pulled a, a lot of samples out. We want, we didn't, we didn't actively, we wanted, I suppose, to, to have a, a variation of sherry casks and bourbon casks um, and we wanted to somehow incorporate our unpeated uh, malt, unpeated malt into the mix. So we just sort of went for it, with the lynches in hand and bang extractors and and just, yeah, we're let loose <laughs> like kids in a sweetie shop, you know? Um, so we, you know, it, it, took a, it took a while. It took a lot longer than maybe I expected it to do, but it, it was all worthwhile in the end, I think. So yeah, we, we, we drew about 80 samples, I think, all told. And we, we put them together meticulously um, and came up with what I can only describe as sort of three samples, if you like. So three potential candidates to be the Arden American single malt, the, the core style that we're wanting to, to have. And we, yeah, we had these three, three, three samples and we showed it to everyone. We showed it to the team. Uh, we got everyone's opinions on it. We spoke to various people in the industry that we know quite well and respect. And yeah, we, we decided on option one of all things, the sort of first, the first one uh, that we, we put together. So it's a, 
it's a split of 65% uh, bourbon cask and matured whiskey, 35% uh, ex Oloroso and PX casks, um, sherry matured, and about, yeah, 50 50 split of peat and unpeated. Now, I can promise you that we did not go out to replicate our production that we've been doing for the last. I, I, was, I was just about to say, so you spent <laughs> two weeks in warehouses, tried 80 casks. And you came up with the exact profile and the very first idea you had. So. Oh, look, it's 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 pretty much, <laughs> it's pretty much there. Um, we're it's yeah, I couldn't I couldn't believe it to be honest. And uh, we, we we played about with strengths and we, we we had it slightly higher. We had it at forty eight um, percent. We felt it was a bit too much. So we we, we eventually settled on forty six point eight as the bottling strength. And yeah, we're. we're what, what I like about it is it has that balance. It's not, mm. over, in my opinion, in, in either direction um, from, from a cask um, point of view. And the fact that it's got that lovely integrated smoke right through, um, it, it leaves you wanting more. And I think the whole, the reason why we, why we, why we made this is, is, is for it to be enjoyed, you know, and enjoyed again, hopefully. It's, it's certainly, I find, very drinkable and uh, yeah. we, we it, the whole sort of Adelphi approach so we basically just installed that into Arden American. What I, what I really like about it is how it's not defined, it's complex, there's complex elements in there, there's different you know flavours coming from the cast type, obviously different flavours coming from the, the spirit type but none of those elements define it in any way you can tell there's probably a little bit of sherry in there it's not all 100 percent bourbon but um th those two are kind of you know just melding really well together and the it's obviously you know there's peated component in there but it's you know it's not a massive slap around the face with a kipper it's a little flick with a pilchard or something i don't know but um it is uh it is it's got that lovely balance and it's ready as well you know it's it's there have been a few whiskies that have come to market and you fully understand the criticism of them, uh, that they want to get something on the market at three or four, but by waiting to six and by cleverly constructing this whiskey, it's totally ready. It feels ready. Well, I mean, the great, the great thing is, and, and you know, the, when we were locked, locked in the warehouses, it wasn't just about um, getting, it, getting the profile right for the core product. It was ensuring that, of course, we've got the next one and the one after that and all the rest of it. And it was so good to see the consistency in these casks. Um, there's a lot of 2015 stock in here uh, from ex-bourbon, both peated and unpeated. And almost without fail, cask after cask after cask. You know, we, we were kind of going, no, no, we don't need any more samples. That's next batch. Um, nice. So that, that's the great thing about waiting that extra little bit. It's not just about getting the flavor, the balance, uh, and, and letting the spirit talk for itself, but it's also in knowing that you've got more for your next one, um, and, and hopefully and, it's a regular. Yeah, well, I, I mean, you mentioned about it being a product, for, a whiskey for, for drinking. It's, uh, it's very striking that this is the first commercial release on, of this whiskey. But it doesn't have the word inaugural on it. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't say how many bottles it is. You're not describing it as a limited edition. Uh, you're making quite a lot of it. Um, that feels like a conscious decision, um, Alex. Um, uh, yeah, did, you, I, you, it's a conscious decision, um, but it's it's a very natural decision. We we at no point look. We've we've had three four releases of maturing spirit under the AD guys since 2016. If you like, they were our inaugurals. We never said they were, but they were just work in progress, keeping people interested, showing what we were doing. But this is, you know, this is the product that we have waited to produce, to bottle as a mainstream brand, if you like, uh, 16,000 bottles in this first batch. And that will grow as time goes on each batch. Um, it's never designed to shout, I'm the first one. It's purely mm. the first time it's arrived, <laughs> if you can make the difference between that. Um, but we're not saying this is a, you know, a woohoo, it's not our inaugural. Um, it's just our whiskey. 
Yeah, great. I think that's so cool. I mean, it's not everyone is in that position. Again, not being critical of other people, you see why it happens. But I think that's so cool just to have, um, you know, that functional, delicious whiskey on the shelves and you're being quite open and saying, there's a lot of bottles of this. We're not saying this is collectible and it's going to be followed by a lot of very similar bottles that you're not necessarily expecting people to collect and hoard. You know, on, on that note, we're... Um... We are, we're due to be sort of looking at casks next month. Um, feels like we've only just done that, but that's the reality. You know, we need to select the next batch, if you like, and um, and, and, and start getting them down. And, and, and hopefully we can get uh, the, the next release of Arden American Single Malt hot on the heels um, at some point early uh, next year. Yeah, well, congratulations. I know you got, it's obviously a very unusual time to launch a single malt. I know there's a lot of people who have worked extremely hard around the clock, but it looks like next week is the, day, is the week it's going to hit the shelves. Um, Alex yeah. must have been uh, gently <laughs> pushing people in trying well, times. We, we, we had that first uh, tasting with you back in April for Adelphi, uh, one of the first virtual mm. tastings, I think it was. And um, we had only literally, after that, we only made the conscious decision that we would launch for definite this year, come what may. Because, you know, we didn't know how long lockdown was going to last or whatever. So by June, we were into the whole process of design uh, and packaging. Now, this has got nothing to do with the whiskey that we're drinking. But, you know, if I grab the box, for example, which is here. Uh, that, that concept started late June. Um, and this is, I think, probably the first ever, uh, I may be wrong, and I, I apologize if I am, but I think it's the first ever fully recycled paper used in a carton for Scotch whiskey. I mean, it, it, it literally is 100% um, recycled paper. And the poor guys who made these boxes, who we owe a lot to, a lot of gratitude, um, it took them a while to, you know, when they got the paper to actually get the construction right because it was just collapsing. <laughs> uh, and the dust was horrific and all the rest of it. Anyway, we got there and that was one of many other aspects, you know, the, the labels, the foils, the bottle itself, all those things. We had about three months and most of the manufacturing companies were either just coming out of lockdown, having, having been closed, or we're about to go on their summer break, which is quite common in the manufacturing industry. Um, so it was quite tense, um, but we got there. And yeah, all I can say, if any of them are watching tonight, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It, it couldn't have happened without that. So um, it's great. And I've got, now I've got to go and obviously place another order for the next one to make yeah, sure it's, it's great. <laughs> it's great. There's more of this great whiskey coming immediately after. So no one needs to panic. Uh, we'll have it on the shelves, we hope, next week for a little bit of time. That might go quickly, but there's more coming later. No one needs panic. Um, I've wandered around the warehouse. There's plenty there, so, uh, <laughs> which is great. Congratulations. So, Alex, you probably need a little bit of rest. Um, I'm going to enjoy this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, comments. like uh, what, are we, what are we thinking in these early days, actually, about this whiskey in terms of what are the keynotes of Arden Merck and what were you trying to tease out here, Alex? Um, well, unique style, that, that's the main thing. And it, it's a combination of being unique and having flavor, like Adelphi's always, you know, prided itself on only bottling something which tastes good and, and you want to have more than just a sip of it. Um, so if you take those as the kind of headlines, uh, within that we have it's, it's quite citrusy, it's, it's quite waxy, it, it's got this lovely salinity, as you mentioned. Where that comes from, we can only guess, but we've definitely got it. Um, and that lovely thread of smoke as well, which is never overpowering, but it's always there. It's like a dying bonfire. Uh, it's always there, and, and it just lifts it a bit. It kind of brings it together and lifts it. So you, yeah, it's a combination of fruit, smoke, salt, uh, and being very drinkable for that. Um, and I, I don't think we need to go into any huge detail on tasting notes, but that's kind of what I get, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'd, I'd, I wrote down similar, similar words. And actually, just to echo what you say, I've had this now, I've had three, four drums of it now, 
over across a couple of days and I'm wanting to come back and try it again. Um, which when you're trying a lot of whiskies, that's not always the case. And especially yeah. with a young whisky, that's not always the case. So it's hugely encouraging from my side. So um, congratulations. Go and have a sit down. Go and have a lunch. Uh, wait for the next wave of um, 15,000 bottles. You've got to get on that quick. Uh, cheers, Alex. Hi. So, Connell, uh, you are in the warehouse where um, you get to um, play around with a few casks. Um, and I suppose at home, we are looking to move on to the Lonwa wine cask finish. Indeed, yeah. Um, yeah, so 2014 vintage, unpeated style, cast strength. Um, so we can kind of call it a champagne cask, but we probably have to have a few caveats there, don't we? <laughs> well, look, it's, I mean, it's, there's one behind me, actually. Where is it? There we go. Um, so, oh, yeah. so with these casks, we we get 10 a year, you know, we, and it's it was through a relationship that we had. Um, with a avid champagne drinker in the UK and gave us a wee introduction and, and it's literally stemmed from that. So the, the champagne house, it has it, 10 casks a year, usually for private private sale. And it goes into such ridiculous, well, not ridiculous, but I mean, you can literally choose the toasting level of the cask. So, I mean, we've, we've tried them all and we felt this was the, the best one to give you a bit of a sneak peek um, as a sort of, you know, just to make up a wee, a wee tasting pack. So, um, and yeah, we've got, we've got 10 maturing. Now, what, they're all from 2014. So it's some of our oldest stock actually, unpeated, that we, we transferred them in. They're in, they've been in now for about uh, just, just a year. They've been in these, these uh, champagne uh, barriques, if you like. And they're, they're doing wonderful things. And the, the idea behind it was to, to release, I'm hoping in spring next year, all going well, that I can, we can put us a little limited small batch and um, together off, off, off this. So we might get a, a couple of thousand bottles and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was, it was a bit of fun. I mean, to be, I've got to be honest when Alex said, oh, we've got some uh, champagne casks coming. I did give, sort of roll the eyes, but, uh, they seem to be doing their, doing their thing. And, uh, I, I really enjoy it. I mean, it's, I, I, the tasting notes on the actual pack when we talk about um pastis donata so the, the little sort of little portuguese tarts green bananas uh lemon meringue pie candied orange lamington cake raspberries cocoa powder but what i've written down today is sort of it's very pastry like pastry and almonds like a breakfast pastry um apricots desiccated coconuts red berries and it's got a quite a big mouthfeel to it it's uh and with that alcohol behind it, it's quite, it's quite a big drum. Yeah, I, I, I wrote a few pretty similar words, pastry plum. Um, I also would add to that quite a lot of wood spice. I think it's, um, in fact, should we explain why we can't quite call it champagne casks? We probably yeah. should. Yeah, we? Probably. yeah, you probably should. I should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, okay. So uh, champagne is a region, obviously. And these casks have been used in the, in, the making of champagne, but at the point when they've been used, the wine has not yet become champagne. So um, champagne is obviously fermented twice. They make a wine and and uh, Lonois, I think he's Menil Sauge, which must be, yeah, that's kind of Heartland of Blonde de Blonde. So they're making effectively a very acidic Chardonnay wine. And then that is put into casks. Um, uh, and the casks are eventually used, but at this point it has no bubbles. Um, and then that wine is then put in actually very small parcels. So he keeps it separated by cask. Um, and then the end customer gets to choose the toasting level, as you say, and then buy the entire contents of that cask, which is amazing. Um, but uh, yeah, the point is it then gets put into bottles, more yeast added, sealed, and you get the secondary fermentation where the bubbles are created. So um, it is inaccurate to call it a champagne cask, and I'm pretty certain the champagne industry would sue you if you tried to. So um, should as well. So yeah. yeah, yeah, but but not not just for brand use. It, it is uh, uh, um, inaccurate. But I think as well, he's using toasting of new oak, and you're getting. A, I would add to those tasting notes a lot of wood spice yeah. from this new oak. And I suppose 
it's less than a year. I mean, I think it's 10 months, 11 months or something, which is quite long for champagne, but you've not got a fortified wine. No, it's not. So it's maybe, it's not, it's not taken so much from the wood, you would assume. And uh, yeah, it's got a big, big spicy element to it. So uh, yeah, and it's, um, it was, it, we're, I mean, the great thing now that we, we, we've got our single malt out, we hope everyone enjoys it, you know, and we're, my job now is to sort of go and see what else we can have a wee play about with, you know, as you said, we've got 10, 10 nearly 10 and a half thousand casks now uh, lying, maturing and doing their thing. So I'm sort of looking now to, we, we've been filling bourbon casks and Oloroso and Petro Jimenez casks for the last, for the last six years. And now we last year we filled our first port pipes. Uh, we're all, I'm also looking at potentially looking at Marsala, Madeira, and um, we've got some special um, Spanola uh, PX um, barriques that are from American Oak, and they're they're going to be in for the long game. But we're very much looking at them, and they're producing some wonderful, wonderful stuff. But it's that's going to be more towards that eight to ten year old um, game. But we're we're very much looking forward to it. And yeah, no, it's it, there's a lot of fun. It just gives us the chance to yeah to experiment with what we've got. I mean, I, I, anything from an Adelphi point of view, we. If, if the cask's good, it's just sent straight up. So I know that we bottled a a rum, a money musk, a fourteen year old uh, single cask for Adelphia a couple of years ago. So we have a rum cask somewhere. I don't know what it is, and I've not tried it. But there is a rum cask of Arden Merkin, a single rum cask uh, here. Even as even as I said, the cask mix of sixty five percent bourbon, thirty five percent sherry. I was thinking, hang on a minute. <laughs> <That's so quite. laughs> yeah, we're only talking about thirty. 30 port pipes and uh but no it's it's that's that's a fun thing now and actually um without teasing too much i'm also looking at uh some heavily peated uh arden american for next year as well so oh so a separate run that's even separate run, yeah. yeah so and just yeah, going yeah. back a few steps actually just before i forget because it's such a cool photo this is the carve of paul lonois which is yeah. like i mean that's so cool that's like a Ridley Scott spaceship in aliens, isn't it? <laughs> it's something out of alien, isn't it? it really is. <laughs> they are so stylish. Um, so yeah, amazing producer. And I'd vaguely heard of it, but um, until uh, you'd, you'd given the rundown of uh, this tasting, I hadn't, um, I hadn't really known much about it and did a little research. And it sounds like a fascinating producer. And I love champagne. So I'm trying to find a bottle, but it doesn't sound like these are something to do. Glass from time to time, but it's... Um... <laughs> Just, just with the release, just to touch on very quickly, the mm. so the sixteen thousand bottle batch, you know, that's I can I can disclose this. It, there is no age on the bottle; it is a non-age statement whiskey. There's a vintage date, a batch date, if you like, but the it's five years old. The the, the youngest liquid in that is five. And the, when when you scan your bottle, when you get one, you'll you'll be able to sort of go through that journey and 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 see exactly what's what's in that bottle in the liquid that you're drinking. Um, and obviously the first aid kit, um, uh, which is, you know, there's a little pan in there, but the first aid kit is uh, designed to, to do what we're doing now. We live in very different times at the moment, and hopefully we'll be doing a lot of these virtual uh, tastings online. It gives us the ability to still say hello to people and and hopefully walk people through um, the art of the American whiskey that, you know, hope originally we were going to be traveling all over the world, you know, to, to, to promote this. You know, this is the next best thing. I think it's working really well. So yeah, great. Well, should we say hello to another person? Um, <laughs> oh, there's Antonio. Um, <laughs> Carol, let's give you a rest. Yeah, um, and uh, I'll see you at the end. Um, hi, Antonio. How are you doing? Hi, Arthur. Yeah. How are you You're doing? In the tun room. I'm in the tun room. It's very good, very sociable here. Lots of things going on. All very socially distant. But it's <laughs> yeah. lovely, it's lovely, steamy, warm aroma coming from the coming from the mash tun so yeah. if i if i slur my words that's the reason <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't worry um so um let's have a look at the next car sample um yes so uh we are now moving on to something a little bit peaty so the are american single bourbon cast 2015 um 59.2 percent and part of your peated stock which I think I said at the top is peated to 30 ppm. Um, 
and uh, is rather delicious. But let's, um, while we get used to it, add a bit of water as people, uh, your role involves um, a bit of travel and, uh, and uh, your wonderful selection of international importers. Yes, we have. We are very fortunate to have importers from um, pretty much 25, just over 25 countries, and they're all lovely. We're very fond of them. And sadly, this year was one of the first years we couldn't have our importers gathering, which mm. happens every autumn, just to try the new Adelphi bottlings. And obviously this year it was going to be for the launch. But, um, you know, it, we've had some great times here, and we were just thinking back on all the you know, from when the distillery was being built. Um, I remember we came with some lovely French customers, our importer there, Guillaume, and some uh, cavistes from Lyon. And it was literally just a ground plan. And if they came back now, they'd be you know, astonished, I think, of the, how, how far it's come. But we had, to, yes, very jolly time with them. And, yeah, um, I, I'm, yeah, I'm lucky to work in the industry and, you know, meet folk like you in Adelphi and and... and um, I think Adelphi whiskey is one of flavour and character, and the people working in there as well. There are some characters. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Very much so. Very much so. Um, and I was lucky enough to go along to one of your imported gatherings. And what a lot of characters. That's extended <laughs> your attitude to finding interesting people to work with interesting whiskey and talk yes. about interesting whiskey. And I walked into the room and thought, who are all this lot? <laughs> but we had a great time. We had an absolutely great time. And then I can, I, I, you know, became quite friendly with them. You can feel their excitement waiting for this whiskey to ship. After yes, we've been selling Adelphi for so long. I know. And well, we're all very Adelphi. excited. And, yes. Well, we, I suppose um, it came to the stage as we, as we added a few more countries. Um, recently, um, we've been very lucky to find some lovely importers in Hungary and um, South Korea. So we've reached a stage really where we didn't have enough Adelphi to go around. And people were getting a bit annoyed with us, understandably. So it was a logical step to build a distillery and a logical step to build it here, obviously. And um, yes, that was really... So it's been a lovely long story. Um, and it's, as you say, it's all about the people. You, I think you were saying that with, with Alex. It's all about mm. the people, our importers. Uh, we, it feels like one big family. I don't know how they feel, but I, I hope <laughs> we, um, yes, we, it's, well, it's, it's it, going to be good fun this next on step. On a small scale, it's underestimated how much, and we, we, we do it as well in our shop. I know the guys, you know, buy this person's whiskey. You know, these people are great. You should buy their bottle of whiskey. And of course, you can't you can't scale that up to seven million cases a year around the world, <laughs> whatever. But at this kind of level, it's yeah. um, customers like that. They like to know that there's fun people who are enjoying their jobs and and you know know that they're lucky to work in such a um, such a cool industry. So, um, so what do you think about the whiskey then, the, the Peter Bourbon? Well, I love this. Is a completely uh, my cup of tea, <laughs> my cup of whiskey. <laughs> Um, well, really, this is so. This is a peated bourbon cask for, um, of one of the 2015 ones, and it's, if you like, it's the backbone of our of our single malt. Um, you know, 65% is is a bourbon casks, and it has it's just it's got that gentleness which I I find in the single malt, and then it sort of surprises you. It's, it's the same, almost the same color. It's a very pale, sort of shabby color. I can't see so much in here because I'm surrounded by lovely. Um, um, back. it's quite orangey so it makes it look a bit darker but... mm. so on the nose that. yes yeah, on you go. very well just very lovely smoky maritime it's, um, when I first smelled it it reminded me of when we were young we had in the winter we had these charcoal pocket warmers which you used to open and they had sort of white fluff inside and you lit a little bit of charcoal and the this smell is, was is, like... Just... This is niche, Antonia. Carry <laughs> on. Very niche. This is really niche. Okay. <laughs> well, it reminds See, me of that. It's a sort of dark, cold charcoal smell, which is, has a good memory for me. And also of smoked cheese. It reminds me of that 70s smoked cheese with the orange plastic wrapper. <laughs> so it's only good comfort, comfort memories. So you put burning charcoal in your pocket. You did. And it lasted for hours. You just blew on it and then it just gently 
and, and it was kind of had a velvet the whole velvet pouch you put in nice. anyway, it was the ancestor <laughs> of you know the chemical one that we get today yeah. Well, I, so, I, went, I went with rock pools and coconut ice cream, but I've never had a hand of charcoal burning <laughs> in my pocket, so I, I can't comment. But it's a lovely taste of it. But charcoal, I totally get. It's... Burnt charcoal and, and pears, I think, of the fruit, I would say pears. I don't know, yeah. but everyone... So, sorry. I do like with the single malt, it's resolutely smoky, but not dominant by that smoke. It's got a little bit of, I found a little, yeah. a little bit of a more of a medicinal element that wasn't in the single malt. But that yes. could be just a particular single cast. Bandages, I wrote it's, down. Bandages, <laughs> yeah, it is, it is more medicinal, a bit more phenolic. Um, and, I also got a little hint of Fisherman's Friend, which isn't always a good thing, but in, in this, it's, sort of, it's got that, that ending, which is a little bit minerally and probably good. Well, I wrote down. I wrote down scallops, so maybe your friend the fisherman was out catching some scallops. <laughs> and coconut, I thought coconut. Was coconut, yeah, you're, I, I'm guessing you're coconut now. But it is which very is, as very maritime, you know, and as Alex said, we don't quite know where, obviously we're right next to the sea, but, or the look. But it, there's a lovely briny rock pools, yeah. I, 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 I love this actually, just, you know, I know it's part of the, the makeup, but actually by itself is really lovely and exciting and fresh yeah yeah no super and um and great to be able to try a single cask of it and see how it contributes to that that final batting and it's clearly a really really good bourbon cask um do you in fact alex told me old forester i think the bourbon cask comes from yes yeah old forester <laughs> but it's a, it's a, it's a um uh, super uh, super bourbon cask and so it's an odd sales job you've got at the moment, isn't it? Because everyone wants more, which is an odd I know sales it is. position to be in. People are very polite, usually. We do get a little bit of <laughs> crossness. But I suppose it's a nice place to be that you don't, you know, that you don't have enough. But uh, it's quite frustrating sometimes, um, which is why I'm glad we now have this, because it means that we can spread the love a bit more. And, whoops, my earpiece keeps falling out. Great. Well, cheers. Thank you for uh, sharing that whiskey with you. With thank us. you, um, and thank you to all our lovely importers around the world. Yeah, yeah, and uh, say hello to the ones I, I've met as well. Okay. Yeah, I really enjoyed meeting. So thank you, Arthur. Now there, yeah. Thank you. We are back off to Connell now, are we? Oh, hey. Connell and Alex. Um, uh, how are we doing? Um, so, should we have a? While you guys, what are you going to talk about next? I, I could have a little dip into the comments and um, should we see what people are saying? Is it, yeah. are we scared seeing what people are saying? Um, <laughs> perfect Antonia. I couldn't, I mean, she is, didn't she? Um, so we're probably going back in time. A lovely pleated smoky taste um, from Robert Allen. Tom Gibson, we know Tom, I'm pretty certain. Camera angle makes it look like Antonia is drinking a wine glass of whiskey. She might well do. Thank you, um, Yeah. <laughs> well, she mentioned Shabley. I, she might just have been drinking a glass of wine. Um, uh, what else are people saying? Uh, the online taste is the best outcome of COVID, in my honest opinion. It's not practical to visit for every relief, but definitely can log on. I agree. And uh, in some ways, they're better than whiskey tastings in your comfort of your own home and and um, and being able to try, you know, amazing drams like this. Um, dram number two is fantastic. Can't wait to see how that develops over the next year. So dram number two, that's the champagne cask. Um, ooh, rivalry, Alex. Best new release since <laughs> Kilcoyne. <Kilkelman. laughs> if I can just say something on that. Um, we, we owe a lot to the Wills family. Um, Anthony once joked with me when when we were oh this would be about 2008 2009 um, uh, five of us the whole board uh, went over to Isla and stayed with him for about three days and he opened his books he told us exactly what not to do and he also told us don't don't build a distillery <laughs> no, no he actually said go for it um, but he was incredibly generous with his time and. Um, he jokingly said, when you have finished building your distillery, anyone that comes and asks me how to build a distillery, I'm going to fire them straight up at you. 
<laughs> and he did. <laughs> it it kind of came full circle last year um, with the great Kilhard blend that we did. Um, the, the blend of one cask of Kilhoman and one Arden American. And it felt really special being able to bring something from us, you know, that he had helped encourage us to do and blend it with what he had done. Um, it was a, yeah, it was a lovely kind of full circle. That was a very earnest and moving speech about something that was clearly dreamt up in a bar when you were trashed. <laughs> a Bruce Willis theme whisk. Oh, there's someone else popping in the background. That's nice. Um, but it was a great release. Uh, to kill hard, kill hard. I don't know. We, we are hoping there'll be um, kill harder. So just uh, watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> we, I hope so too. Paul Anderson, is that it? Video ended abruptly, but then straight away, we're back. Lol. I'm glad I didn't see that earlier because I would have panicked. Um, Steve Morley, online tastings, more support for that. I've created a completely other community and a new way of learning about whiskey. Um, yeah, I, it was when things started to be easy, it was like, should we plan more of these things? Should we carry on? But I'm so glad we did um, because I, I really do think they're adding something. Graham Mackay, who's he? Um, sorry, he's answering. Yeah, he, he's one of your new sales team. You're expanding your sales team, Connor. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's been Antonia and myself, and, you know, with the help of Alex for the last, well, since I joined nearly two and a half years ago. Um, but with with the impending launch of our American single malt, it was time to, to reinforce um, and, you know, hoping to conquer some other markets and, you know, and, and, and get into other places. I mean, we're currently in about 20, 23, 24 markets now export around the world. And that was just with the Delphi. So, and Arden Americans heading that way as well. So yeah, we took, we took Graham on in August and uh, he's actually just, uh, he's now a proud um, parent again with it, with his, with his lovely wife, Abby, they've just uh, taken their uh, Fergus into the world. He's about three weeks old now. Um, and we've also recruited um, Jenny Carlson. Uh, who is now our marketing and communications manager? It's going to help us um, launch our American as well and the Delphi. So yeah, look, I, I couldn't have asked for a better team uh, to be around me, and yeah, we're honestly we just can't wait to share this whiskey um, with the world. Two more great people, two more characters. Um, <laughs> uh, Michael Cleary says hi, Alan. I think we can all echo that. Hi, Alan. Hi, Alan. Um, <laughs> Um, Donald Brody put me down for one of the champagne cast bottles. It's lovely. Champagne in capital letters. He's looking to antagonize the French. He, he can, we, can we um, say we, Donald? Yeah, Donald, Donald's uh, a very big supporter of us. And uh, the lovely uh, gates that you see as you pull up to the facility, they were designed and installed by Donald. So. Oh, wow. They are very, very impressive. And they're new. They weren't here last time, were they? Yeah, they are new. Yeah, we, we, we yeah. brought here, yeah. Ewan McGregor, simply wowzers. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Philip I mean, Doyle. Break from his acting career, which is great. It's bloody <laughs> lovely, gents. Well done. Um, uh, oh, there is Jenny. Hey. Try, <laughs> try to leave some of the glass and let it sit for a bit. It gets better and better. Um, yeah, I noticed that as well. If you haven't poured all five centiliters, tonight, then um, we, we've had to rush through it a little bit today. Uh, but yeah, it does evolve really well in the glass. So um, oh, there's Norbert, one of my colleagues and a great, great whiskey fan. Um, uh, I, d I don't quite know what Norbert's talking about. All quiet on the Western <laughs> Front, but <laughs> he's a great whiskey fan. A new future classic, uh, Arden Merkin, the Western Highlands rise again. Um, it's been a long time in the rising. There's not been an enormous amount there in the Western Highlands, but you did put it in the in, in the bottle. So that, that's just a snapshot of the comments. Um, and uh, we'll move on to last dram, and then uh, I'll let you guys talk through that as it as it's your whiskey, and I'll retreat into my last glass. Um, and then we'll maybe just, if you want to start firing up a few questions, the ones that you know the ones we like the most, we'll maybe have time for a bit of a Q and A the, at the end. How's that sound? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let me just, before I go away, uh, uh, comments, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. 
Um, let's um, get up the uh, the um, the sell sheet, the, the brand sheet for the last whiskey. I'm getting there, guys. Don't worry about it. Um, Arden Birkin, single Oloroso sherry cask. Um, so another 2015 vintage, but this one is peated, 59.5%. Um, so, uh, yeah, Connell, why don't you tell us about that? And I'll just retreat into the background. Yep. Okay, everyone. So this is the, the last round of the evening. And this is from a single cask, cask number 670, from the first fill uh, Oloroso um, sherry hogshead. And it's peated, so it's it's that lovely uh, peat and sherry combination, which we want a lot of people to love. It seems to be very in at the moment. We're, we were just discussing there, uh, Alex and I, before we came back on, that this is very reminiscent of a, a sort of barbecue that's just about to die that might have had a bit of ham, glazed ham, and some pineapple on there as well, um, which is a, a tasting that I like to go back to. But I definitely get it on this. Uh, five years old. And yeah, it's, it's it's one of many of our sherry hogsheads that we've got lying waiting to, to, to be things with. But we felt that this was a really great example. In fact, I've, I've used this cask over the last sort of year to 18 months, taking it around. We took it to the whiskey show in London last year just to show people how our sherry cask mature stock was going. And yeah, we're, we're really happy with it. I mean, Alex, have you got anything else to add to that? No, I mean, all I would say is that, and following on from what Antonio was saying, um, in the washbacks earlier, that you know, her cast that she was talking about was the next bourbon, uh, this is the next sherry. We, we mentioned right back at the beginning that it's a 35% sherry, 65% bourbon uh, matured um, mix in the single malt itself. And it's great to be able to see these in their own right, the single cast across both styles. Um, and when we were locked in the warehouses uh, back in July, Putting the single malt together, we were cracking open all these casks and going through them. And it was just great to see the consistency. Um, there's this lovely flavour, as Joel mentioned, cherry and beet. I mean, there's even a bit of Tabasco spice in this one, which is quite, quite a kick to it um, for all the right reasons. Um, and I can tell you, standing in the lower Dunwich warehouse, um, it's probably about eight degrees from here. Um, as you can see, we're fairly well wrapped up. This is a perfect whiskey uh, for the environment. Um, yeah, I remember. I remember writing these notes. <laughs> I forgot about them. But the, yeah, boat varnish, tiger balm, Parma violet, Tabasco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Tabasco cloves, prunes, sea salt, and beach beach bonfires. But yeah, I think it's um, it's, a, it's a crack and drum to, to end the tasting. Um, but, uh, Join us. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I actually I, I forgot to mention when I was when I was on earlier about uh, the launch. So we we, had, we actually went with three products. So we were going to have the, the single malt release, the sixteen thousand bottle batch, the, the first aid aid kit, AD kit, um, which you're tasting now. But also um, coming slightly later, just given the supplier uh, glass bottle supplier um, issues, we are releasing a single cask as well. So true to what we have been doing. For a very long time, 28 years now with Adelphi, we we felt it would only be right to release a single cask. So there is a refill Oloroso Sherry Punchin that will be going out to the world, extremely small quantities. I think we've managed to get 694 bottles out of out of the Punchin. Um, but it's yeah, it's, it's from a refill, it's just tasted lovely, and we we identified that very quickly that that would be the one to go out to market with. The, an interesting fact about it is that it, the previous incumbent, if you like, was a 35-year-old uh, Adelphi uh, Altmore that, um, that we released uh, back in 2015. Yeah, back in 2015. Uh, that was, I remember actually when I was working in New Zealand, we was going to trying that uh, Adelphi Altmore there. I thought it was an absolutely tremendous jam. So the fact that we selected that whiskey to be our first single cask was, was very special. And it was great because you know we we were going through all the first pills looking for the single cast. We had an idea of where we'd find it, and we thought, oh, let's just have a look at that refill as well. Not expecting a refill cast to have done enough in five years, and it just blew us away. I mean, it's 
it's well beyond its years in terms of maturity um, and just really nicely matured. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that one myself actually. Well, did we get any ourselves? Yeah, a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think we'll leave it. There. I think we'll leave it there. We'll do a wee Q and A. Will we do a wee Q and A? Yeah, do you want to manage that? <laughs> <laughs> I've got no idea what I'm doing, but I'll uh, I'll let you. Uh, oh, okay, we'll jump in. I'll let you. Oh, there's like a hundred comments, so you can. Yeah. Okay. Boat varnish says. Uh, I also thought boat varnish. I wrote that down. Yacht varnish. Absolutely. Um, question from John Lamont. How big are these cars behind Alex? The max size is 700 liters. Alex. I'm just quite small. Alex is very small. Um, they, they are 500 litre butts. And in fact, this one, number one, which Funnel's about to investigate, um, was a present from our great friends, Glenn Fartus. Wait, timing. Oh, timing. Peter Donnelly, say hi to Antonio. Oh, no. oh, Look at that. Peter, Peter Donnelly works for Glenn so. Fartus. Hi. Um, uh, well, sorry, what were you saying? No, I'm just saying, this, this <laughs> task number one was a present from uh, from John Grant at Glen Parkers, and it arrived uh, at the opening and was the first cast we filled. So thank you, John. Um, very, very generous present. Yes. Uh, let him have a look at it. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we now have six people in the warehouse, which is the maximum we are allowed. <laughs> all standing two meters apart. <laughs> all standing two meters. Um, of course. The quality of the. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the quality in all these drams really shines through, guys. Well done and thanks, Commander Club. Um, Philip Doyle, the question oh, Do you have a date for the cast release? Single cast? Yeah. Uh, so we're. I'm hoping for about mid November. I'm hoping that if, you, if you've been a good boy, that Santa will bring it to you. Ah. Yeah. Um, uh, more comments. What have we got? Uh, Kevin TWS, lovely whiskey, guys. Well worth the wait. Given your indie background, we will see, we will get to see independent bottlings of Arden Merkin in a few years in the future. Will there be independent non Adelphi bottlings of Arden Merkin? Or is that Adelphi or non Adelphi? Well, independent. What's the point of that, though? Because that's just Adelphi. I don't know. <laughs> there, no. may, there may be an Adelphi Arden Merkin, yes. <laughs> They may also be non Adelphi Art American too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I've still got something in there. Is Graham Eck Eckford, again, an outstanding raw my whiskey's tasting. Thanks again. I'm off to boil an egg. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it is becoming a meme. Um, <laughs> nice comments from Denmark. Henrik Olsen saying, Oh, yes, yeah. Henrik. You mean Henrik? Yeah. Um, impressed by single casks, by the single cask. Common streak of distillery DNA, oh. so important. But each with an individual character. Enviable range of stock for batting. Um, that is true. Um, here we go. Uh, Michael Smith. Also, this is the very first live stream I've been on when someone opened a proper cask as part of the tasting. <laughs> hashtag trailblazers. <laughs> um, hashtag it is going back in the cask, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Michael this is for nosing purposes only. Yeah, we are assessing the quality and then putting it back in the cask. But I must say, it's wonderful. Like a, a six person distillery launch, single malt launch. I feel so lucky to be here. I really do. Um, Julie Hamilton, we all know. Oh, Glasgow, yeah. Gl Glasgow Whiskey Festival. We're so excited to taste the drams tonight. Suffice to say, they're all excellent. Well done, everyone. Um, let me just see. I don't know what this means. It feels like an in joke. Fraser Greenwood, is there room for cruise ships in the loch? <laughs> yeah. So, no, very good question. We had um, our great friend, Mr. Dave Broom, hosted a uh, trip from the world, which is, oh, if nice. not the largest. So, in fact, it was so big, they sent two tenders with 50 people on each over to the jetty here. It parked itself up um, at uh, Tobermory, which is at the other end of the loch. And part of our tour experience is we we eventually end up in the still room where I was earlier. Yeah. <clears throat> and you can see on a lovely sunny day, which of course it always is in Ardemarkin, yeah. you can see Tobermory Distillery in the distance, about 12 miles down the lot. 
and I had this great spiel and brought my hand to, up to the window and said, and of course you can, oh, and the whole thing had been blocked out by this cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we can take cruise ships. <laughs> yeah, do cruise ships even exist anymore? That's a problem. But they, um, <laughs> Sasha from Germany, I think I know. Sasha, Sasha. Sasha. Hey. Yeah, I think I know Sasha. Um, oh, John Stewart, he has a private cast maturing in the warehouse. It will be four years old in November. I'm now so excited for the future. What number is that, John? Because we'll just go and have a look at it now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was one thing, speaking to cask owners, like how excited they were in seeing the excitement for the new single malt and thinking, oh, I made a good decision yeah. by the glass, <laughs> which was nice. We spoke to a few of them, of course. Um, Sarah Geraghty. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coral yeah. Cask. Yeah. yeah. Um, Really enjoyable tasting and great jams. Well done to the whole team and Arthur too. Oh. Oh, there you go. Oh, you need to add that in. <laughs> yeah, I can say what I like. Uh, I can edit it. Um, can we pre-order one of each bottle? No. And now, no. Yeah. no you can't. <laughs> um, I'm afraid not. Hamish. But um, they will be hitting lots of retailers. Obviously, it's all my whiskey's tasting, but uh, Adelphi are much love within the industry. It's not just us who have bottles, so don't panic. If not this release, the next release, Adelphi is going to hit the market and there's lots of people coming. Uh, sorry, lots of people going to stock it, which is great. Um, I think we're getting to the end now, aren't we? I think so. I think we need to n assess nose this, this cask very soon. Um, I would like to just quickly, before we say thanks, just mention, and actually Sarah Geraghty reminded me because she is a Compass Box super fan. And... <laughs> The next tasting slide is not up there. Oh, darn it. Our next tasting is Compass Box. <laughs> um, so I'll just describe it. But um, it is basically a 20th anniversary tasting with John Glazer, the founder of um, <laughs> Compass Box, and someone who has, I would say, changed the industry. Um, and it's a two-part tasting, seven drams per tasting, we talked him down from nine per <laughs> tasting and incredibly generous of him because he's actually gone into the archive of um, the company archive effectively. So it's a two part tasting done chronologically with some bottlings from very early in his career and then uh, the second half slightly later bottlings as well. So another once in a lifetime tasting. This was a once in a lifetime tasting, but that is another uh, once in a lifetime tasting, except there's two of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, so that's coming through. The details are on, are on our homepage. It's not cheap, but there's some incredibly rare whiskey in there. And um, yeah, we feel incredibly uh, pleased that John um, asked to work with us on this. I think we were his first ever customer, which is why he's doing it. So kind. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, I would like to say thank you to all of you. Thank you very much for having me up here. It's been a really, really lovely night. I think you what we just wanted to. Show a drone. We'll just close, close on a wee bit of footage on the facility and we'll, we'll sell it tonight. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Arthur, I'd, I'd also just like to thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you've trekked all the way up here. Um, you bypassed a, a, a lorry on its side. I did. You, you, you <laughs> crawled in at some point. Um, and yeah, no, thank you. This has been fantastic. And yeah, um, as I said earlier, thank you to all our suppliers for making this possible. Thank you to the Lost Clock team who did that video that you watched at the beginning uh, only two weeks ago. Um, that's how quick we put this all together. Um, and also a huge thank you, if, I don't know if he's watching or not, but to Fraser McDougall uh, for allowing us to stream live from the distillery for the first time properly uh, because he installed fibre to the premises mm -hmm. about three weeks ago. So yeah, it's all come together. Great. Well. <laughs> Uh, all very lucky to be here, and I'll leave with a shot of the distillery. You'll see one of the warehouses, I think we're the one closest to the, the distillery, and you can imagine us being here for probably the next five or ten minutes, and we'll be off. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>